Thanks for joining us on Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. Stu Rich and Mike Wood here to take you through the card at Royal Randwick this weekend. Plenty of bets coming your way. Of course, we've got best bets, value bets and the $100 hot seat. I'm waiting for that one, Mike, to put you under immense pressure <laughs> later on in the show. But welcoming a new in, mate. It's been a big week and some lovely weather around in Sydney. Yeah, great week. How good is it? Just the last month, you usually get 100 mils or more during this time of year during the carnival. So much rain. Absolutely. But just lately, only 15 to 70 mils around we could bone dry out there at Royal Ramwick. Great weather for golf, great weather for fishing, great yep. weather for going for the beach, but who cares about it? It's all about the punt on this show. And we're looking forward to betting this weekend, especially because we're giving away some cash to charities this week, Stu. We are. We've amassed $1,000 to give to the National Jockeys Trust down in, at Flemington. We'll be there to present that cheque. And, of course, Mike, everyone else at home, they can head to njt.org.au. They can get off their punting apps for just <laughs> one minute. That's all it's going to take this weekend to donate to such a fantastic cause. Yeah, great organisation doing great things. Make sure you get those, those punting apps, like Stu said. If you've ever had a win off the hard work that jockeys do, yep. and if you haven't, you should probably give up the game, definitely make a donation today, if not Friday, and a big day Saturday. They're doing a big drive on Saturday all day long. Absolutely, and well, let's try and win the punters some money for that day as well, Mike. And we've mentioned the clear conditions, and we're back to Royal Ramwick. Pretty simple. We can go through this page really quickly, Royal Ramwick. The last time we were there was the All Age Day, April the 20th. What a great day that was. Good dry conditions. No excuses for the horses, the jockeys, or the punters this Saturday at Royal Ramwick. OK, and we're going to be dissecting five races on <laughs> Saturday, Mike, and I've got my on a few little imports here, and I guess a lot of these three-year-olds potentially heading to Queensland as well. Yeah, they've got us covered with those last two races, race eight and race nine, 1,100 metres and 1,000 metres. They are very, very hard, so we'll avoid them. Race three, four, five, six, seven, straight through the middle. And like you said, Stu, a couple of imports in race three and race four, we'll be looking out for them for sure. OK, so we've really get dissected the chunk right out of the middle here. Three, two to seven are the races we're looking at. And how good is this? Jump straight into a 2,000 metre race. It is the Mizuno handicap, so let's have a look at the market here to kick things off. And, well, the big question here, Mike, is no a risk? And I'll tell you what, the punters, they do not think so. Into $3.30 from as much as $6. One of the three greys in the race... And a massive win there to the 1,800 metres at its latest. There's Cariff there, $6, coming off a fresh and frenzied. Interesting horse here. Very raw talent for Gay and Adrian Bott. Really sticks his neck out like his dad, Americane. Maybe off to the Queensland Derby if a good performance here. Think it over at $8, a progressive. So you think gelding there for John Sargent. Angel of Heaven, one of six rides here for Dwayne Dunn. Obviously up for Team Hawks this weekend. A little bit of money there, 13 into $11 as well. But look, no boo, Mike. We mentioned before the show, it might be a little bit risky, but the punters don't think so. They don't think so. And you can see why when you look at this replay. But there are <laughs> some bus. questions I've got over this Kensington 1800 metre race. Look at this race, they went at a really, really strong tempo. So the leader's tired and back on the inside, they kind of caused a bit of a traffic jam. Nobu was back on the inside, smoking his pipe, swept to the outside, won in an amazing racing in amazing time. But we've seen him before, we know he's only an OK horse. So maybe, maybe, Stu, he's a Kenzo horse. Well, he's a Kenzo horse, but look look at what he did on the Kenzo this day. But hang on, so the Ramwick just across the rail there. It could make all the difference, those 15 yards to the left, some big form turnarounds after that race. Fun fact, one Eugene's pick in Semper Fidelis had an 18-length turnaround. Can you trust that form? Wow, we will find out. There's some good stats. Let's have a look at Angel of Heaven here, who, well, let's say, did not get as much luck as Nobu in the running in that race. You'll see it there, just in behind, just getting into some real scrimmage here, Mike, and we'll, we'll never probably really know this last year. We will never know, but maybe we'll find out about this horse if she comes to Sydney on Saturday, what she's like with a decent tempo. Okay. The last three starts has been steady tempo, steady tempo, steady tempo, and this day she kind of got jostled back, back in the field, back on the inside, just started to warm up late and just when you don't want to, she got blocked. Yeah, right. And I was on her. heels at the finish. I know oh, you were. <laughs> I was with you. Let's have a look now. Get this race started as we create our mini race of the first of our five races this weekend. Of course, we've got the form here, Mike, and we'll be getting to the, all the key factors. So hard to analyse races when you've been on them before. You've got to be unbiased <laughs> all the time. Nobu, the best form, but he does go up in weight. OK, so it is Nobu, the favourite, out in front for form, as you would expect. Let's see if the others can catch up during our mini race here with the first key factor being progression. Yeah, can he improve off that big rating? I don't think so. The great Frenzy's up on the way up. Think it over's on the way up. Bayard's improving. Bjorn Baker's flying. And Fuji Fury, he's improving as well. He sure is. And, uh, well, look, there's a little bit of go here, but they've still got to catch Nobu. What about this distance, the 2,000? Yeah, strong types up to 2,000. Think it over from So You Think. She'll love it. Angel of Heaven, she just wants some tempo, please. And Fuji <laughs> Fury... Some tempo would help him as well at Ramwick. OK, so gold bars there for a few at a little bit of value. They're 
tightening the gap here on Nobu. What about track conditions? We're on a good surface. Well, this, we're kind of playing some games here, aren't we, Stu? What do you do with the key factors <laughs> when you think a horse loves Kensington? You just give every single other horse a gold bar, that which is, is what we've that done here. That is amazing. Is yeah. that a pot on the favourite? I'm not sure. Let's have a look at position in run. Yeah, it's kind of gaming the analysis. But anyway, <laughs> position in run, Cariff goes forward, Costas goes forward from the inside. Angel of Heaven, she can jump better than she did last time. And Bayard, he's the likely leader in this race. OK, so we've finished our race there. An Angel of Heaven has made a light dive at Nobu and Cariff. Pretty much on the line there, Mike. I've never seen that for track conditions for a horse like that, especially being a favourite. Let's have a look now at all the ratings because it's time for a bet in race number three at Royal Randwick this weekend, Mike. And, well, look, you said it from the start. Nobu, Kensington horse, as you said, 15 yards away. We're now on Randwick. That has just stuck out at me the whole way through here. $3.30, though. The punters love it. So this is a big conjecture. Yeah, big difference. I just want to watch him at 3.30. His rating was enormous. But these other okay. horses are going to the Queensland Oaks, the Queensland Derby as well. They're all in the mix. There's five or six chances there. Perfect pitch can always run a place. But the ones that we like to win are Angel of Heaven and Fuji Fury. Both for the Chris Lee stable. They're both nominated for Brisbane as well, and they've accepted for Brisbane. So watch out for where they go, but they can win this race on Saturday, down in the weights for sure. All right, we might have to be looking at a few of those, but it's Angel of Heaven there for us. at some very good value, $11 to kick things off at Randwick. And the next race we're going to have a look at is the one straight after. It is race four, and again, we're over 2,000 metres here, Mike. And, well, this race for me is pretty much which import do you really want to be on in this race? We've got Wolf, who is, listen to this, a yearling in Japan, educated in France, winner of three out of four in Australia, and Gay's got him earmarked for the Group 1 Metropolitan in the spring. So plenty of interest in Wolf, Master of Wine, German bred, UK raced, up from Melbourne, right there on the next line at $7.50. Belfast Bella, forming behind Free Fly 2 at $8. And of course, Occupy, a USA sire, UK import, and ruining really well at Scone. Mate, that's more international <laughs> than your list of ex-girlfriends, mate. Let's have a look wow. and see what we think of this race. Wolf, Canterbury, second up, straight to 1,900 metres. Box seat. They didn't go much tempo this day. They're just on the inside here, cruising around the turn, gets the split, doesn't have very long to put a margin on them. But boy, he was good the last 150 metres, wasn't he, Stu? Yeah, I was, I was in a watch mode this day. I really wanted to see what this horse is about and have a look at that. Away he went and all that money's come this weekend. Yeah, Welsh legend in second. She wanted to come third in a group two in Brisbane, so the form's been stamped. Those first four or five, all decent three-year-olds. It's decent form, we think. OK, look, we had a little a look at a horse in the first race that got a bit held up and we can probably say the same here about Belfast Bella. Never really got a massive crack, Mike. It was out the back here. It, you know, just took a little bit of while to walk wind up here. We've got held up to the 200 metres in the form guide here, but hang on, this horse can, he's got a reason for doing that. Yeah, Dece, it gets back, so it's often unlucky. I think it's out of its last five starts, four times it's been unlucky, either stuck wide or getting back. When I first saw her, I thought, gee, she can win this race because she was unlucky last start, but coming to this race on Saturday, maybe she doesn't have the upside and the progression of some of the European types you talked about before, Stu. Yeah, well, let's have a look to see if the key factors can help us out there. We're going to light up the gold bars for the form, followed by the key factors. Take it away here with Wolf. He beat Welsh legend and he beat her easily. <laughs> light her up for form. OK, so there is Wolf out in front. They've got the job in front. Who's got the progression? Loads of them. Maybe not Belfast Bell, like we said, deep into preparation. Subban as well, ombudsman. Maybe he needs more time over 2,400 metres, but there's the ones with the progression. OK, plenty of gold, including the favourite there as he steps out in front. What about this? distance. 2,000 metres round with Gabe Waterhouse. You've got to love it. Master of Wine can improve up in distance as well. And Occupy, he smashed the line last start. OK, so a bit of love for the two favourites, Wolf and Master of Wine. The good track. He's a big boy. He's tough. He's strong. Ombudsman should love the big round with track. OK, so a little bit of gold there for Ombudsman, but they've still got to catch Wolf. Does he get the best position to run? Yeah, I think on paces will be advantage in this race. Those three or four highlighted there all go forward. So Barnabas rolling forward if he comes to Sydney. He's nominated for Brisbane as well. And Wolf just in the box seat. He was so good with cover last start. So it could just be Wolf in the box seat, just extending there at, right at the end, Mike. Let's have a look now because it is time for a bet in race number four. Very keen on this horse, Wolf. Mike, I'm glad to see there was a bit of a distance in the ratings there. Two lengths. Well, it is $2, so maybe punters wanted to see a little bit more. A lot to like, a lot of upside, but I think the punters will be howling after this one. Yeah, they'll be howling if they're on or if he gets beaten, I guess, but ugh, $2, two lengths. I'm just yeah. not sure, Stu. Obviously, got big upside for Gay okay, Waterhouse. But she gets her horses so fit so quickly. Nader in bot, of course. I just want to see him on Saturday. I don't think he'll get any firmer than that. Master of Wines on a bad bet yep. for value. But no bets on this race on a Thursday night. We're waiting for Saturday for sure. OK, well, it's best bet there. If you know, are looking for a bet on Wolf, let's look at the first two races at Royal Randwick this weekend. And stick around after the break. We've got three more big races coming your way.
Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. The next race we're dissecting at Royal Randwick this weekend is race number five, and it's over the 1,500 metres, a benchmark 78 for the three- and the four-year-olds. And all well, this time of year, Mike, so many progressing from the midweeks, and one of those is another very well-backed favourite here in Colding. Big winner last two, $1.90 at its latest for the midweeks for Walla. There's Quackerjack on the second line of betting at $5. Gilded this preparation, a bit of an all-or-nothing horse for Marky Newman, so let's hope he turns Turns up. Asherani there, $7.50. Not much luck in the dark jewel at Scone. Nico Led, $8.50. And Red Flags all through his form as well. Reginae, $8.50. Some money there. Form tying into Quackerjack around military zone. But this colding, Mike, looks really impressive. And that was a serious last start win as well. Yeah, but gelded recently two big wins, one after the other. This is the most recent one at Canterbury. But was it his birthday, to use the words of James McDonald after a race when a horse gets a good run, box seat following a strong tempo, peels off heels 200 metres out, shoots clear, and the horse that came second, Say Da Vinci, is only an OK 1,200 metre horse. That so was a big win, but maybe he had all the luck this day. Soon. Well, it did look very good to the eye, Mike, but that's all you're here to do, dissect all that, times and obviously all the form in behind. One thing we do know is Asherani, Mike, we were on it this day. Look, it didn't have much like a couple of runs before this, but this day it was weaving its way into the race. And, well, look, what do you make of the last 100? She's just a good filly, isn't she? Whether she's got more progression, this preparation will be the key, I think. Fifth up, she's staying in Sydney, I think. Coming from the back here, only a steady tempo, winding up late, smashing, yep. or about to smash the line <laughs> when she gets held up and blocked. Really good run against mares that are much higher in the benchmark ratings. So back in this grade on Saturday will really suit her. All right. Well, let's hope it's not a run like that. If it does happen to be in the bet later on, Mike. Let's have a look now at all the form and the analysis now for these horses over the 1,500 metres in race number five. Lots of good form. Colding could have been on top, but like we said, only been an average horse in second. So a few get the gold bar there. OK, this race is definitely getting started here, Mike, as we get the key factors with progression. Yeah, some three-year-olds with big upside. Colding, Quackerjack, Asherani all improving. Paul Lita, first up in American import, could do anything. All right, $2.40 favourite here, but he's got some company. What about distance? The big question for Colding, I know he's a gelding now. I know he might get 1,500 metres yeah. from Barry 1, but he's got to do it. He's a neat, compact, muscular type. He doesn't look like a miler. Asherani does. OK, so a few queries here for the favourite as Asherani sticks her neck out in front here, Mike. And, of course, the track conditions. Looking at Ramwick, Asherani and Regine Athletic. Nice-looking fillies. They should love the big Ramwick track. There she goes. Asherani right out in front here, Mike. And who gets a position in run? Well, Colding, at those odds, I'm not giving him a gold bar because he might get buried. Quackerjack goes forward and leads. Paul Lita goes forward as well. Chalmers from Barrier 3 and Almahaha, he can go forward as well. OK, so as we finish this race, it is Asherani that's got the length break on Quackerjack there with Colding a little bit in behind here, Mike. So taking a bit of a pot against the favourite. Let's bring all the ratings back in now because it is time for a bet in race number five. And, well, look, there we go. Asherani on top, $7.50. The favourite, a couple of lengths behind. A big play here, Mike. And there's Paul Leader, Scat Daddy Mare for Kira Maher and Dave Eustace, Newgate owned. We saw this a couple of weeks at Scone. How's the form for Philadelphia and Maryland treating I you? think it's OK. You do not want to lose on poor leader. So put five bucks, put ten bucks, put <laughs> something colding. Look, he can definitely win if he runs out the 1,500 reds, but he definitely didn't run it out last time. There's two on top, Quackerjack or lead. Asherani can go for, more for than she did last start. And they're the two bets for us. Asherani's better odds. And she's the more progressive type. And Quackerjack's so solid on pace. All right, we like odds on this show. And there's Asherani for us at around that $7.50 mark to fill the pockets in race number five. The next race we're looking at is race number six. And for us, it's the first sprint race of the day that we're looking at, Mike. So 1,200 metres here. Benchmark 78 for the fillies and the mares. And here is a good horse. Gododden, $3.30. An elusive quality by mare by Benicia. I saw some fundamentalist form in there from the spring. So that's got to be shaping up well. There's Zonk right there at $4.40. Gave Chris Williams his first city winner for his boss, Leslie Bridge, who said, good kid and big value with the claim. So got to, really good to hear that. Ready for profit there at $6. The 40K daughter of Smart Missile, winning the list of Denise's Joy at Scone. And, of course, Gong's $9.50. A little luckless of Scone there, but you can look through his form and see Mystic Journey in the spring. Yeah, some good form lines for this race. None better than this last start from Gadoggin. Gadod... Gadoddin. Gadoddin, you did it. <laughs> I got it out. 
first up, very, very well back. There was a lot of money for this day, which is a great sign. She leads, she kind of slows them up around the turn. She's not the most genuine. She's kind of not, not sure what she's doing out in, out in front, but James yeah. Mack kept her focused and she was simply too good. Yeah, a little bit green there, but look, Mike, this is just one of those wins where they've simply done it, as you said, and just a really, really strong win. She's a good looking type. Medavina back in fourth, one on Wednesday. Good signs for her. Okay, so good form through that race. Let's have a look now at Scone. It is the listed Denise's Joy. And we'll look ready to profit here, Mike. Just peeling to the outside here in the red hat. We're looking at Evelina and Gong's very unlucky in the blue along the inside as well. We're absolutely hammered at about the 220 metre mark. You'll see it happening soon. Look, ready to profit was way out of the market this day, wasn't she? She was okay last preparation of 1,100 metres. She's failed over 1,200 before. Was she in the right lane this day or is she better this preparation? We'll find out on Saturday. But one thing that's definitely a risk is she's three starts for nothing over 1,200 metres. So she's got to prove herself for the Rambic 1,200 metres on Saturday. OK, and some nice margins in there and behind as well, which it's is always good, good to yeah. look for in these replays. Let's have a look at the form and all the analysis now as we start the key factors for race number six. Three strong favourites. They all go <laughs> forward. This is an exciting race. Gododden, Zonk and Ready to Profit, all great form. All right, it's got me interested. The favourites all right there. What about the progression? Well, some of the favourites can improve second up. Some of them don't. Zonk can sometimes take a step back second up. OK, so it's Gododden ahead of, or with Ready to Profit there, just ahead of Zonk as we hit the distance, Mike, the sprint. This show is called the Key Factors, and this is the Key Factor. Here we go. Up to 1,200 metres, three on paces, Timmy Clark on Gododden has got the strongest filly over the last 200 metres, we think. All right, so Gododden just shot away here. Does he like a good track, though? Uh, yeah, should be fine, but looking at horses, I'll definitely like it. Evelina at Ramwick is a big plus for her. OK, so Evelina with a little bit of gold. They've all got to catch Gododden, though, Mike. Position in run. Who gets this one? It's a pretty good-looking barrier for Zonk, and the others have to come over from out wide. Oh, I thought you were just going to declare this. It just <laughs> jumped ahead, Gododden, but Zonk and Ready to Profit have just aimed up as we finish our race here, Mike. I would have thought I'd expect to see two or three lengths there by the way you were talking. Let's have a look now because it is time for a bet in race number six this weekend. And there's Gododden on top, as we said. But just the length there, Mike. But I thought you've just said so many good things and you've, you've pretty much said there's so many queries on these other two. Yeah, but it's not all about the ratings, is it? So you look at those three and you go, they're all great fillies. They all won well first up. But I am still confident about Gododden because of that key factor distance. She'll go forward with the other two. She'll put the gas on 300 metres out and she'll be the strongest over the last 100 metres. She's the best bet for us. Best bet, no, nothing else needed. Gadot in there for us in race six. Let's wrap it up now in race number seven. It's over the 1,400 metres, Mike, and we've got Renewal here on top. And, well, this horse really did used to do a little bit wrong, didn't it? But look at its form. Star of the Seas, tick, 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 in great form now, $3.60. Mahalunga, two lengths off trekking, absolutely flying that horse. So that was its going, $6.50. There's Organza, a great return in the dark jewel. Questions on whether it just peaked late there, seven. $7 special missile. I'm pretty sure we said he wouldn't run out a strong mile, and a strong mile he did at Scone. And there's Noir at $9. <laughs> so, look, renewal, Mike, not well, one of your favourites from the past. Yeah, I think the profile for special missile said gets 1,550 metres. So we were 15 metres off, weren't we? Sometimes you get them wrong. Let's have a look at another Kenzo win, which, like Nobu, was a massive performance, probably three or four lengths better than recent performances for renewal. Gets in the right lane, probably six, two out, gets some cover, cruises up four wide, smashes them and beats Star of the Seas, who was so, so impressive last week. This is a big win, Stu. Yeah, it's a big win. Is this horse just a little bit hard to catch? Massively hard to catch, can be slow to jump, can race keenly if you push him forward too much in the early stages. John Van Overmeer rode him so well this day. But he doesn't get the claim on Saturday. And like you just said, Stu, he's not always genuine either. OK, well, let's have a look now. Oh, I don't like looking at this, Mike. I had a big bet <laughs> on Organza this day. We're going to see it go down by the barest of margins, an absolute nostril. But look, moved up. It was urged along. It joined in. It fought on. You can't expect more than a horse. You saw that. this replay and you hated me. I did. You? This is yeah. a big... But I had, I think, is it Schubert or the other Godolphin horse, whatever it is, coming home well well in fifth or sixth and did absolutely nothing. So at least you were close. The thing about Organza, she's super tough. She can roll forward. She's always consistent. And despite the fact she's got a wide barrier on Saturday, she's almost definitely going to get the death seat outside the leader, which is a great spot for her. OK, look, loves the, way, loves the way she fights. And she did that just there. Let's see if she can do that again on Saturday. And to do that, we're going to need to see all the analysis here. So show us the way. Show us the gold in race number seven. Yeah, maybe Renewal could have got the gold, but we didn't give it to him up in weight. Organza was so good at Scone. New Universe is absolutely flying. 
and Noir is forgotten. She's a very classy man. All right, well, let's get the key factors started. Mike, four on top here. First one, progression. She was amazing first up, wasn't she? Organda's really yeah, good second great. up too. Moss trip, she can only go up. She's terrible at the moment. And tip top, he can improve second up off the Kenzo run. Okay, so we've got some value there, but it is Organza out in front as we hit the distance. Yeah, 1,300 metres, not ideal for Mahalunga. He was well backed at Scone, so he's still going well. Back to 14, he won two starts ago. OK, Organza still out by a length, but some healthy competition here. Four within that margin. Does the good track help any of those? Uh, well, Royal Ramick for tip top. Scone, oh, Kenzo maybe didn't like it. OK. But coming to Royal Ramick, he could improve second up. <laughs> All right, this is still a very, very close race here, Mike. Does position in run help anyone out? I think so. Here we the go. Speed There's some gold. looks really obvious. Let me take you through a special missile lead. Mahalunga back on the box seat. Organza outside the leader. Noir three back the rails and Pecans one out one back. And it's Organza <laughs> in front. That's the main thing. Mahalunga and Noir levelling up just one length in behind, Mike. But Renewal, the horse we just can't catch, a few lengths in behind there. So it is a favourite. So that's what we've got to have a look at now. Is it going to be a favourites play in the last? Not looking at those key factors for us. Plenty of value looks to be in the race here, Michael Organza. So, so solid. Mahalunga in great form. Noir, look at these odds. They are all much better than the $3.60 Renewal. Renewal could be on the way up, but we just don't think so. We think he had his birthday last start. Those top three are all great each way bets. Don't let us put you off any of those three, but we're going for the girls. We're going for Organza for Godolphin and Noir for Waller. What great stables they are. <laughs> each way from great positions in run. They'll be so hard to beat. All right, solid there for us. Organza in race number seven. There's a look at five races in depth this week, but stick around after the Blake break. We've got the $100 hot seat and, of course, our more very important charity multi. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. We've had a big look at the card at Royal Ramwick this weekend. And, Mike, you are under the pump because you're heading up the Punters Club this weekend. So, look, we've had a look at five races, but there's four others on the card. I'm expecting many winners out of these for you. National Jockeys Trust Charity, punting and tipping for charity. Does, it, does the pressure get any higher? Okay, Let's have a look at go. the tips we've got all day long at Royal Ram. We've got some tips for Flemington coming up as well. On Saturday, reloaded 185. Bomb Bagitti, great trial last start. Bomb Diggity, sorry, can't pronounce it. Great <laughs> trial leading into this at eight bucks. Angel of Heaven, if she stays in Sydney, eleven dollars. Wolf, we talked about it, two dollars. Maybe wait for Saturday. Asherani, seven fifty. She's great value. Godotten, Organza, and Deprive, a trifecta there for the Godolphin yeah, stable. Blue, One, two, yes. three, and got the Goss storming home. At forty-one dollars, we will be cheering at Flemington for the National Jockeys Trust. So that gets up. Yeah, how good would that be? That'd be a great way to end the day. And of course, Mike, those punters heading out to the track after they've donated their hundred dollars to charity. Of course, they're going to have a bet, and let's put them on a hundred-dollar winner. So they've got the hundred dollars on the track that week. And where are they going to play this weekend? So important. We keep the profit going. We profited last week. Twenty-dollar multi place multi. Yep. Prince Farwaz. We haven't talked about him. No. But he booms home for Anthony Cummings. He'll be so hard to hold out for second or third. The favourites will probably win it though. Organza plays as well from just outside the leader. $25 bundle bet. We're going against Colding, Quackerjack, Paulita and Asherani, the ones for us. The best bet of the day, Godogan, Godogan going forward. She's so strong and got the got the goss. We just had to sneak five bucks on him. All right, see. 41s would be good. Godogan is definitely going to get a few people tongue twisted <laughs> this weekend, Mike. And of course, Charity Malt is probably the most important this weekend. So let's have a look how we are playing that. Plenty there coming from the hot seat. So let's start with a place multi. We've got race one, Prince for was, as you said, Birmingham, $2. Gadotten, $1.65 a place. That's a sure thing. Organza, $2.60. The boys in blue will run that one home. So there's 10 at the $8.60. Let's go to a win all up now. We're going to have Asherani. That's big odds, isn't it? $7.50 into Gadotten, which is the best bet on the value and the hot seat at $3.30. 10 bucks at that at 25 to 1. And look, we're just pretty, it's easy to get up, Mike. <laughs> Why not? 10 bucks at 130 Pretty much on all of the above, hoping that all those get home. And of course, Gadotten, for the win, and most importantly, we want to get this charity multi home for charity. Yeah, it says 614, but we're guaranteeing $1,000 for the National Jockeys Trust. That's like a TRG bonus bet, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely 1000 bucks at least for the National Jockeys Trust on Saturday. Yeah, well, look, wherever you're having a punt this weekend, make sure you head to that website, njt.org.au, to donate. And, of course, good luck on the punt this weekend, whether it's Randwick or Flemington, but head to theraceguide.com.au for all your feature profiling as you hit the track this weekend. Enjoy your weekend.